So today's podcast is on some common mistakes made by lobbyists. Uh, this is a piece that Ray Lebove, who teaches a lobbying 101 course seminar, and I uh, put together and uh, published a few years ago, particularly with new lobbyists and even with some more experienced ones. There are some common mistakes that we have seen over the years. And so we'll offer a few observations and suggestions for addressing some of these common mistakes. Not reading the bill. Don't rely on other person's descriptions or understanding of the bill that you're working on. Instead, actually read the bill, the committee and floor analyses, ask questions and try to understand the bill and its provisions yourself. And then you should be able to articulate what the bill does or doesn't do in your own words. Not having paper. Every legislator or staffer prefers to have a leave behind or a piece of paper, whether you're delivering it personally or electronically, so that you have a one pager, perhaps two for more complicated or detailed bills that you can give to those that you're lobbying. This leave behind gives them something to reference or helps jog their memory after you've already met with them. Taking votes for granted. Even if you think a legislator will vote with your position or against it, at least pay a courtesy visit and confirm your belief or your understanding. Make sure that that legislator will in fact be voting either with you or against you. In fact, even if you think a legislator may vote against your position, you may check because perhaps you might be pleasantly surprised on occasion that the legislator sees things from your vantage point. Failing to meet with both committee consultants. Don't forget that there are both majority party and minority party committee consultants with each of the 33 assembly standing committees and 22 standing Senate committees. Be sure to communicate with both the committee consultants and the Republican caucus consultants and provide them the courtesy of giving them the same paperwork so that everyone has the same information because in the end, they're both completing their respective bill analyses for the members of the committee. Not finding the right bill author. We could talk about finding the right bill author for quite a while, but you know, fundamentally it takes time and effort to determine and secure the best possible author for your bill. Uh, you know, you can only mention that there are quite a number of factors that go into properly selecting the best bill author. And we think that a good lobbyist will take the time to determine a few top candidates to carry their client's bill and then work diligently to secure one of those top candidates to carry the bill. Not properly reading the situation. Whether you're sitting in a legislator's office lobbying for or against a bill, or whether you're sitting before a legislative committee preparing to testify in support or opposition, read your audience. For example, when the committee chair says, there's no opposition to this bill, so keep, please keep your remarks short. In fact, you don't have to make any remarks. Perhaps identify yourself, your client, and your position, and just indicate that you're there to answer questions. At the very least, substantially curtail or limit your testimony to a sentence or two. We can't count how many times we've seen witnesses read an entire testimony statement for several minutes right after the committee chair just said, keep it short. Not properly understanding the, lie, the lobbyist and client relationship. Many lobbyists at the outset don't reach an understanding with their client about the client's expectation. For example, how's information provided? What information is provided and when? How are substantive decisions like whether to accept or reject amendments are made? Who determines the strategy and tactics to be used in support or opposition? Figure that out in advance. Not telling the entire story. While few of our fellow lobbyists outwardly lie, not telling the entire situation or story is not the right approach either. It's better in particular that your bill author, your client, even a fellow colleague in the lobby corps hear news or statements directly from you rather than from somebody else. Eventually in this business, everything becomes public. 
So it's better to let everyone know in advance rather than having them learn about a development on their own. Also, when the information comes directly from you, then the recipient can trust that you're an honest broker. And that is another way of being a good lobbyist. Forgetting to be careful with what you put in writing. Boy, in today's electronic age and the prevalence of social media, word travels extra fast, especially in the legislative process and legislative circles. So if you don't want information widely known, then it's just better to not put it in writing, whether in email or in a letter. In addition, because it's so easy for messages to be forward to, forwarded to other recipients by way of email or text, you really don't want sensitive information or comments to reach an unintended person. And if that's the case, then don't put it in writing. Of course, we could come up with a myriad other common mistakes made by lobbyists, but these are some of the main ones that Ray LeBove and I regularly identify for his lobby seminar participants.